All right, that's it. I think we're okay. We're live. Yay, we're live. Let's make sure. Give him a moment here. Oh, yep, there we are. I see us now on uh, on the Facebook page. All right, cool. <sighs> Give it a moment. All right, well, let's go ahead and get rolling here. So, uh, and welcome to this very special live episode of the Vonnie Podcast, the podcast making you invulnerable to coercion. I'm Shane and I'm Jason. All right, so uh, this is the uh, first time I think I've everything configured correctly in Open Broadcaster, but uh, if you guys could, uh, you know, drop something in chat and let me know that, uh, you know, levels are fine and that uh, you can you can hear us, uh, you know, loud and clear. You should be able to without any issues, but uh, hopefully uh, we're, we're, we're coming through uh Fine on uh, fashion's book. So, since government is the primary coercion upon individuals, this podcast, everything found on the website, is covered by BIPCOT, no government license, as well as reuse and modification to anyone except for governments and the bludgies thereof. You can learn more at BIPCOT.org. Uh, <coughs> so, let me just take a look back here real quick. Still got a uh, couple, so they, if they're still here, then they must be able to hear us. So, I guess we'll just continue rolling. Uh, so, today we, ha today we have a, a special live episode for you. I have a, a couple interviews coming up that I would like to uh, stream live on Fashion's Book. They're going to be big. Uh, so, I figured uh, we'd do a, a test episode of sorts, and uh, I'd learn how to use Open Broadcaster. And it uh, wasn't as difficult as I thought it would be, uh, you know, as long as we're coming through. But uh, first, I do have one big announcement. I finished writing my book. Uh, it is titled Vanu, A Strategy for Self-Liberation. Uh, it's currently in the hands of my proofreaders, but I do have it available for pre-order. Just visit libertyunderattack.com forward slash Vanu book. Uh, to secure your copy today. Uh, you can also just uh, click the link that I'll put uh, in the description here in a moment once I turn, turn it over to Jason. So uh, how are things going, man? Uh, not too bad, not too bad. It's uh, nice and cool. I had a good day yesterday. It's a good day today. Um, so yeah, things are doing good. And and for the readers out there, I did read uh, his book, and it's very, very good. And I think it's it's... <sighs> It's it's almost I I don't want to say it's a Vanu white paper but it's 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 very similar to a Vanu white paper and it would be it's it's going to be a must read for all Vanuans and all people interested in Vanu. Well, I I definitely appreciate that. I've I've heard back from a couple of people. Obviously, it's uh you know the first draft of the manuscript, so there's uh, there's some work to be done on it. But uh, overall, I mean it's 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 all been it's been you know quite well quite well well received. So that's uh, certainly uh, great to hear. Again, libertyunderattack.com forward slash Bonnie book. Uh, I should have those shipped out uh, here in the next few weeks or so. I was hoping to have them ready by the Midwest or re ready by the uh, Midwest Peace Liberty Fest coming up in uh, oh, 13 days. But uh, you know time uh, time ran out and uh, I wasn't going to. Uh, you know, force my volunteer proofreaders to, uh, you know, bust their ass to get it uh, back to me within like three days. So, um, you know, <laughs> not going to not not ideal, but regardless, I'm just happy I got it done because uh, I don't know. It was, it, it was I originally started working on it a year ago and it was going to be, a I guess, a primer on or I guess a primer on direct action, like the, the entire thing. And um, a couple months ago, I was writing the Vani portion and uh, it turned into like 30 pages and like two weeks of writing. And I realized I was writing the book on Vanu. Uh, you know, while I was writing the book on something else, so I uh, changed changed gears a little bit. But uh, uh, but yeah, I, I definitely recommend uh, going going to uh, going to pick that up. So uh, Jason, today we're just going to uh, read and discuss some of Rayo's best quotes as part of this uh, this little test episode. And uh, then actually after this, uh, I'm going to go uh, record a mainline episode with uh, with Kyle. We're going to talk uh, encryption as part of the crypto anarchism series. So uh, it'll be uh, it'll be a good time. You ready to roll? Sure, let's do this. All right, so the first, uh, I guess, uh, selected quote, uh, and these are, I guess, my, my favorite Rayo quotes personally. So uh, he said, quote, Freedom does indeed need more full-time professionals, not collective movement preachers seeking a coterie of followers, but explorers, inventors, developers of liberated life ways, end quote. And that was from Libertarian, Libertarian Connection, number 15, November 17th, 1970. And keep in mind, Libertarian Connection was the biggest Libertarian publication of that time. I actually have a picture of one of these publications where Rayo's name was too below um, well, his article, Rayo's article, was two, two, I guess, two below in the table of contents from Walter Blocks. So these people were all in the same publication. So that was uh, Libertarian Connection. And just imagine, have, imagine putting that in there. You know, with liber like with uh, around that time, you know, the Libertarian Party was, you know, uh, the anti-Libertarian Libertarian Party was, you know, probably being hypothesized about in this uh, in this uh, paper. And uh, uh, 
you know, Rhea was uh, coming out here pretty <sighs> pretty hard against uh, all this collective movementism stuff. But uh, you know, he's he's certainly correct. Uh, you know, there have been uh, there there are enough anarchist politicians, unfortunately. Uh, you know, there are enough. Uh, you know, uh, I guess. Uh, um, you know, folks pursuing the, the political means. Uh, there, there needs to be more folks that uh, you know actually develop these lifestyles and make them make them feasible for for the average individual, so that they can trans so that they can transition from the first realm to the second realm. That's kind of uh, uh, the idea here. But uh, what do you have? Well, I agree completely. Uh, freedom, freedom, freedom is, is, is not a, it's not a, a nine to five thing. Like you can't do you can't be about freedom during the week and and be servile during the week weekend or or vice versa. Um, it, it has to be something that you're constantly in pursuit of, you know, it's, it's not something that, as we've said, it does, it's, it, you can't, you can't subscribe to it for, for 1995 a month. Um, so it, it does, it does need people that are, that are full time interested in freedom and, and pursuing freedom, pursuing Vaughn and pursuing the second realm, pursuing the things that, that Ben Stone outlined in his book, um, and those people, those people will be the foundation for the for the next generation of freedom seekers and and for the next generation of of, of anti-government types um right yeah yeah I, I, I definitely do agree and obviously the goal would be i mean at, at this point uh you know at, at this like at this stage in the game um yeah you know it, it was you know rayo said this back in the 1960s but you know it's a it's a pioneering time like uh it, it's uh -huh. the stuff the stuff hasn't developed yet you know it's it's, it's freedom pioneers there, there is no uh i guess uh you know uh, as in the uh, anterplex article i like to cite so often uh you know quote the technological part is developed enough what's needed is entrepreneurs delivering these technologies in the hands of the people waiting for them for if the people mm -hmm each decide to withdraw their support of the tyrant and for 9.99 a month are able to do so the tyrant <laughs> will indeed topple uh and quote yes. so that's that's the idea but uh, unfortunately we aren't at that uh we aren't at that point yet and uh it will it'll take some time and it'll take some some committed folks to to, to make these things uh, feasible for uh for for everyone else but uh, anything else there well yeah it's uh, uh again what, what you said about um uh the technology about having to technology has to catch up to the ideas um, and, and we talked about that back on building the realm, uh, three with Ben Stone. Right. Um, and, and we talked about some specific activities through anonymous crypto, uh, anonymous cryptocurrencies. And, and, and I, I said something to the effect of, Oh, why doesn't this exist now? Or why doesn't this exist already? And, and that was the answer is because we had to wait for technology to catch up with the desires. Um, and right. and tech, technology is getting to the point where we can do uh, a lot of the things that that are that were outlined in the building the second realm theory that were outlined in in uh, Paul Rosenberg's book uh, the the you know, uh, a lodging of wayfaring men a lodging of wayfaring men um, so technology is getting to that point where we can build some of these second realm things where we can do Vanu on the cheap where we can do these freedom strategies. Um, largely not not because of government or, or anything like that, but uh, not even in spite of government. We can do these things without government, with, with without having to get involved in, at all with the servile society. Um, and and that that is where technology is going. And yeah. yeah. Yeah, it, it's kind of because it's 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 kind of like the uh, you know the chicken before the egg thing because it's because the, uh -huh. the ideas kind of have to catch up the te technology, but the technology also has to catch up to the ideas in some ways. So it's it's kind of uh, it's kind of both of them. Mm -hmm. um, so it's 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 interesting, certainly. A, a, a yeah, really... and and every and every idea that does come forth will spawn more ideas. Yeah, Vanu fosters um, other Vanu. Yeah, Vanu fosters other Vanu freedom. You know, freedom ideas create other freedom ideas and. <sighs> With things like like the blockchain and, and and anonymous crypto and oh my goodness, it's gonna get it's gonna get so fantastic. It's gonna get real interesting. It already is. It already is. Uh, but yeah, we're we're <laughs> certainly at the at the infancy of, of, of what's uh, what's really to come with uh, with this crypto anarchism. A lot is a and, lot and has happened in just twenty years, man. Well, yeah, even just not, ten years. Yeah, and just in the last ten years, like like you could almost call now like the second or third generation um, self-liberation, right? I mean, there, there, there was the hippie movement, and then there was like the, the retreatist militia movement, you know, people right. moved into the woods. Uh, the crypto, crypto is kind of like crypto and, and, and the blockchain and, and all these other strategies are starting to come forth. You, They can almost be considered like the, the, the third or fourth 
generation of of freedom seeking of self liberation um building building on what's in the past and and the the, the next generation of of freedom liberation strategies is going to be it's uh, it's yes, going to end th- it. and it's, thankfully it's... And, and and thankfully um with you know technology the way it is today uh you know things are archived you know at uh, you yes. know at the you know Vani podcast we've got all those di- all of those uh, publications oh, from the 60s and 70s digitized well not all of them but a lot of them um so that uh, you know Future freedom pioneers won't have to go through all the all the work that I had to to get all to get, to nope. get all this stuff out. So, um, nope. you know, this stuff is uh, this stuff is there for posterity. It's there for, uh, I guess, bar, you know, barring some, oh, I don't know, nuclear war or something. You know, the the inf- the information is going to be there, and even after that, you know, the, the, I think a lot of the information might might still right. be there. But nope. no- knowledge weighs nothing. Right. Right. Uh, so, all right, next one. Uh, quote, liberty depends on laws and their interpretations and so is easily destroyed. Vanu, while not necessarily illegal, depends on reality, not legality, and so is more durable. Uh, that was from Vanu Life number 1, May 1971. Uh, so the idea here is, uh, you know, liberty being, I, I guess, kind of the uh, uh, liberty being a general exemption from coercion. Um yeah, liberty. Uh, <laughs> you know, relying upon liberty means you know the closing of uh, the closing of loopholes and uh, you know relying upon uh, uh, you know the the state to you know accept your permits and all that sort of stuff. But whereas Vanu um, and, and and yeah, law, laws and their interpretations often change, uh, as Rayo said somewhere else. Whereas uh, Vanu is based on reality. Uh, it's based on the external factors of uh, of, of the present world. So um, it's it's more durable. And as as we said a moment ago, you know Vanu fosters other Vanu. Whereas uh, liberty, if you're talking about legal interstices or legal loopholes. Um, you know, utilizing a gun show loophole doesn't open up more loopholes. Uh, if anything, no. you know, it, you know, it might get closed down at some point. So um, that's that's kind of the idea with that one. Absolutely, Free- freedom is illegal. Freedom is unconstitutional. Uh, that is that is the reality of of government. Uh, government government hates freedom. Uh, loopholes exist because people are fallible. That's that's it. That's that's the only reason that loopholes exist. Um, and, and the laws like the constitution, like, I even want to say like these, these servile morality, right? The, the, the morality of the servile society versus the morality of, of freedom, the, the servile morality, it's that they're, they're treated like all the cart menus, right? That, that people pick and choose from them what they want. You know, I want, I want this minus this plus this, you know, I, I want, I want this, but I want to substitute for X, um, so yeah, it, it's it's freedom. Freedom is illegal, um, and and l- legal loopholes, they're just they they only exist because humans are fallible. Yep, they're worth utilizing, but uh, to rely upon them is uh, something a new no. one uh, will not do. So, uh, all right, this one is incredible. Oh man, this is this is good. You know, this is where Rayo was uh, a little bit of a wordsmith. So he said, "Quote." I'll join. The contemporary state is not only incapable of protecting its citizens from outside aggressors, it has become the biggest aggressor, and with its endless taxes, conscriptions, and interferences, the state provides justice by mass terror, freedom by mass servitude, and defense by mass murder. Just as the state is obsolete as a means of defense against foreign governments and private criminals, so politics are obsolete as a means of defense against the state. Political reform, revolutions, or education at most changes rulers and slogans. It does not bring about enduring freedom. In a community of a few hundred, democratic procedures can be helpful. In a nation of millions, they are only placebos. End quote. Vani Life, March 1973, which you can actually get by going to uh, vanipodcast.com forward slash VL. So, wow. I I, uh, love that quote. (laughs) It's so good. It's true. It's it's absolutely true. And and it is a wordsmith. It is a wordsmith quote, but it is it is 100% on point. Um, not only can can the government, can politics, can the agents of the state not protect you, they will tell you, they will tell you that the agents of the state are not responsible for your safety. Right, yeah, like right? Brand, uh, not Brandon Brevi, Ohio. That's for for other purposes uh, that I use that one. Um, yes. But yeah, there's uh, you know Dis- Dis- uh, Shaney versus Winnebago and a bunch of different ones where you, uh-huh. have, you know yes. uh, bludgies don't yep. have any uh, any any you know duty no, to protect no personal con- property. No, no constitutional obligation to protect you. It's because cops aren't. You know, it's because uh, yep. you know as as per Roger Roots's white paper, our cops co- our cops constitutional. Uh, no. So yeah, they no. have. So if they are, if, so therefore, if they aren't constitutional, then uh-huh. obviously they have no constitu- constitutional duty to protect uh, you or your property. So it makes logical sense. Uh, it really, really does. Mm-hmm. Yep. So. And, and as for the political means, nobody that is truly 
a believer in freedom and a, a believer in, in liberty will ever rise to power in a system that is designed to keep those who truly who, who are truly in power in power right i mean no like ron paul like okay like ron, ron paul came close but you saw what they did right i mean yeah come that's on that's he's i mean i you know he's he, he was he, he was a political ruler so you know i'm not a uh-huh. big, i'm not a fan Absolutely. of ron paul for that and also the ron, he, paul, ron paul copyright scandal where he sued it where he went after his own yeah. supporters with a lawsuit that's bullshit um you know i i don't like ron paul but he is like as far as you know a politician where he actually yeah, he, like he is, kind of remains he is, kind of remains principled while violating his principles you know through, pol- yeah. through, the, through the political means um you know that doesn't uh you know that doesn't uh happen <laughs> well, he, happen. he he is my favorite statist yeah it's a, if I, do i have a favorite status it's not ron paul that's for sure i don't know <laughs> i don't know i'll just think about it so uh all right uh, the next one uh quote so big coercive government like one crop farming is inherently bad ecology free non-conforming people like diverse natural vegetation are part of the earth end quote uh, that's from Fonny life march 1973 mm-hmm. too i just really like that one i mean there's not a whole lot to say about it but uh you know just um you know free non-conforming people like diverse natural vegetation are part of the earth um mm-hmm. you know i like it i like it. anything there oh absolutely uh i i studied i studied environmental science for a while and and i i have worked in in the industry for a while um and wherever you have an ecology of, of a single species, you know, like tree farms, that's literally all you have, right? There, there's, there's not, there's not a lot of, 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 of animals there because, because there's no diversity. So like plants, they, they need diversity in order to thrive. Animals need diversity in order to thrive. Humans do too. Like we, we, we are not, we're not one trick ponies. We're not one note people. Um, we have, Varieties of interest. We have varieties of loves and and, and hates and dislikes and all this a non, shit. A, non, a non-diverse uh, society is a non-innovative society. Absolutely, nobody nobody grows in an echo chamber. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So. Uh, oh, I, I like this one too. Well, obviously, this is my favorite real quotes. Why am I saying that every single time? Uh, okay. The next one. <laughs> they're, all, they're all your favorite. <laughs> they're they're all great. Um, except for, you know, the ones that we've done Redux articles for. Um, quote, whether one will be happier as a free man or as a slave partly depends upon the individual, but this choice is not open to most libertarians. Relative contentment and servitude is possible only for those who believe in it. Most libertarians are too independent and well-informed. For libertarians, the choice is between freedom and neurosis. Uh, end quote. And that's from Libertarian Connection number 15, November 17th, 1970. Uh, and he is correct. And w- I mean, we see this phenomenon a lot, Jason. It's un- especially the last selection cycle. It's it's unfortunate. But uh, you know what? Uh, uh, you know, folks who haven't uh, you know exercised those collectivist spooks for folks who, mm-hmm. um, you know, um, you know who don't uh, you know pr- pursue freedom, where it's just kind of this uh, philosophical thing. Uh, you know, it's it's really it's it's it doesn't take much to get them to uh, blow with the winds of political expediency and to compromise on their principles and to draw them back into the political system that they're trying to get yep. rid of. Uh, so I mean, it, it's it's it happens way too much. It really really does, which is why we started season uh, two and season three, I think. Um, well, season I don't know. Regardless, we we I know we started season three with um, you know the philosophy stuff. You know how to exercise its collectivist spooks because that's the important that's an important first step because. Uh, you know, someone could, you know, pursue a Vanu lifestyle change for five years, and if they haven't dealt with those collectivist spooks, I mean, you know, Vanu, uh, you know, Vanu's a lifestyle change. It's not something you do for oh. five years and then, you know, go back to, you know, conventional living. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it happens far too often, man. Oh, absolutely. You know, um, fear, fear is a great motivator, and and the government, government, and and the powers that be have have really perfected the use of fear as a propaganda tool. Um, and, and the, I don't want to say the, the majority of libertarians, cause it's, it's obviously not the majority, but there is portions of libertarians, a portion of, of, of anarchists and, and voluntarists and all that other stuff that, that will never be a slave. They, they will, they will never, they will never fit in the box uh, of the servile society that the government wants them to fit into. Uh, and again, that, that's part of human nature. That's why, that's why the, the, the propaganda is so much and, and they have the, the 13 year indoctrination camps and, and all this other stuff. Um, to to try and to try and 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 indoctrinate that out of people, but yeah. uh, um, Ray, Ray was right here. I mean, there's, <sighs> I just I just brain fart. Yeah, it's it, it's 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 just unfortunate. It, it really is. Is there there you know there you know really 
you know, folks that I used to that you have a lot of respect for, and uh, then mm-hmm. it just all it took was I mean it, it took you know me of knowing him for one one or two years, and you know them being you know really good people. Uh, you know, but then you know, just it didn't take much for them to get dragged back into the political means and start advocating for things that uh, I don't know no. oh. aren't <laughs> ideal. <laughs> yeah. well, at least he is better than Hillary. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. Okay. All right. Uh, I guess. Uh, yeah. So, uh, let me see. I guess I think this is the last one. Yep, last one. Uh, for this, uh, I guess, test episode. Hopefully, everything's coming through. Okay, I haven't had anyone say any say that it's it's silent, so I think we're good. But uh, last one, quote: A Vanuan to me is not just someone living in a particular manner. Lifestyles may change. A lifestyle which was Vanu one hundred years ago may not be Vanu today. Some lifestyles Vanu today Vanu today were not possible one hundred years ago, and may not be Vanu fifty years from now. A Vanuan is someone who places a high value on relative and vulnerability to coercion. Someone for whom freedom is worth a fair amount, though not infinite, of effort and convenience discomfort. To a Vanuan, Vanu is not just a means to other ends, nor is it an ultimate end. Like most qualities of life and life itself, it is both. A Vanuan will choose whatever way of living offers personal sovereignty and will change lifestyle again and again if necessary, end quote. And he's exactly right. A hundred years ago, van nomadism wasn't possible. Uh, it just well, wasn't because there, there was no vans. <laughs> right. So 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 so, so van nomadism was not a lifestyle change that Venuans back in the you know I guess the early 20th century could you know partake in. Um, just as you know, I hope I hope a hundred years down the road, uh, you know, anarchists can shoot off up to space and you know start uh, you know space steading. <laughs> Because uh, then government would just be irrelevant. Um, so Great, we're gonna have, we're gonna have a whole bunch of lone stars flying around. <laughs> yeah, just imagine the state trying to uh, to to pursue, uh, you know, Venuans, you know, across uh, you know the vast universe. I mean, it would it would it's it's an opportunity cost that they cannot bear. So yeah, once uh, once you know once we can space it, you know, uh, you know, governments are relevant, and uh, you well, know uh, people can finally live free. Are- Governments are irrelevant now. We just gotta wait for technology to catch up to space studying. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, one of the one of the major points of that of that article is is um, or uh, that that quote is is that that Vanu is the ability to, to adapt to one's environment, to to one's desires, to one's needs. Uh, you don't necessarily get that when you're living in a brick and mortar home with you know four walls. You can't you can't really move it. You can't you can't change it. You can't. You can't adjust to to your needs, desires, your wants. Uh, so so Vanu Vanu really is the ability to adapt, to the ability to adapt and the ability to to overcome whatever situation is presented to you. Um, and and another one of the points that he really makes is is that, um, it it is it is entirely individualistic. What what you necessarily want to do as, as your freedom strategy is not necessarily what I want to do is my freedom strategy and, and what, you know, somebody else is doing is their freedom strategy. So that there is no one way to Vanu, right? It's entirely individualistic. Right. Uh, and what, and within that is the, also the idea of risk versus reward. Um, there's like, we, we talked about it before. There's, there's certain, there's certain things that you almost have to do as like a van nomad, in order to limit your coercion, that have to go through the state, right? Like driver's license and mm-hmm. and, and having your, your vehicle registered and things like that. Yes, th- those have to tags. go. The slave tags, yes, th- those are through the state. Yes, you have to go through the government to get those things. But having them limits your coercion, right? Allegedly. It, 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 allegedly In most cases. Right? <laughs> Mo- yeah. yeah, but you – it, it – it gives the opportunity to, to, to lower your, your vulnerability to coercion. Right, right. It, it, it gives you it gives you a chance, whereas if you don't have those things, I mean, the, the amount of coercion is going to be increased uh, quite quickly, and you'll probably be dragged off to some oh. government dungeon. Um, but, yeah, I think it's – I think it's uh, I, I, uh, also important to mention that, uh, you know, it's uh, – uh, you know, a, a new one will change lifestyle as, as much as, as – as, you know, as often as, as necessary. Uh, you know, if like with uh, with Rayo, they uh, you know pursued, uh, Rayo and Roberto pursued van nomadism, and they uh, you know decided to do the uh, wilderness Vanu thing. Uh, they right. changed lifestyles to uh, make themselves more invulnerable to coercion, and uh, a lot of folks you know uh, you know, choose van nomadism as their interim lifestyle, and uh, then they move off to uh, minimal sailboating or something along those lines. So, um, and 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 you know maybe. You know, maybe at some point the government roads will be so tyrannical. Like I, I don't know. Like maybe you know, maybe uh, I, I just saw uh, on the yeah, Seer Memories on Fascist book a year ago. Uh, Jason Paradise and I did an episode on 
uh, you know, blockchain paths to, like a path to authoritarianism, because that is, you know, one possibility. And technology is a tool, and the state's going to mm -hmm. use technology for th for their own ends. So in yep. 50 years, let's say that, you know, uh, you know, everything is, you know, uh, you know, centrally, you know, like centralized blockchain based, and it's all digital, and uh, the government can track you everywhere you go through the roads and um, through through scanners on your car, and uh, you have to, um, I don't know, go through, uh, you know, normal checkpoints every 50. Like I don't know what the scenarios yeah. will be, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Then phenomenalism might not be possible. So then you might have to change lifestyles to to something yeah. else. So that's the idea. Oh, I agree completely. Uh, big Big Brother, uh, Orwell's nineteen eighty four. Big Brother was on the blockchain. That that's the only way about it. But uh, and you, you do that's 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 the. I think that's that's one of the, that's one of the, the the core premises of Vanu is is the ability to adapt. Uh, you have to be able to change. Just as as we talked to Carl. Um, uh, the the live interview with, with with Carl and 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 how they had to how they had to, to change the layout of their van right they they were in one van they changed to another van and they changed out the they changed the layout a couple times and and they they carry the tools in order to adjust again and 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 when the when the waves are good they're over here and 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 when the weather's bad they're over there and uh, they they adapt to the environment they adapt to what's around they adapt their they adapt their needs uh to 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 fit their desires and it's um just as with van van nomadism or or minimalist sailboating or even homesteading you have to be able to adapt so that you can prosper so that you can move forward so that you can enjoy what you're doing because if if you're if you're doing vanu but you're not enjoying it then you're not really free because then you're a slave to it yeah yeah that's definitely true that's definitely true uh, so yeah, that that's those are all the uh, all the quotes that I I guess my my favorite uh, you know Rayo quotes and those actually were taken from a Steemit article because uh, I was trying to figure out what we we're gonna do today because need something small that we could do for a test episode to make sure everything is coming through okay and it looks like looks like it is so uh, mm -hmm. I don't know I guess uh, yeah, yeah, this, this 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 the interview I'm talking about will be uh, it'll be a Liberty it'll be on LUA but I'll put it on uh, on TVP2 because it's relevant for the crypto anarchism series so um, I, I guess to, to to tease you a little bit so. <laughs> Uh, the guy that I will be interviewing uh, this coming week, uh, he worked on a project with Cody Wilson called Dark Wallets. Uh, it's a uh, dark wallet and Libitcoin, which are ways to uh, you know make Bitcoin anonymous. Uh, a couple a couple of years ago, they had the uh, the alpha out, the the alpha version, and uh, nothing was really done with it. Uh, actually, check back uh, you know a couple days ago. And uh, Dark Wallet is, uh, you know, there and uh, available to use, which I was really, really surprised about because I haven't seen any advertising for it uh, or any marketing for it. But uh, so we worked on Dark Wallet with Cody Wilson. He has been a, a Bitcoin developer for a long time, basically since the beginning. And uh, he actually, uh, you know, uh, just uh, recently uh, decided to go to uh, Rojava and fight against ISIS. Uh, yeah. So that should give it a give away who it is. Uh, but he's a uh, he's a crypto anarchist, just a really really incredible dude i mean he is a um, I, I don't like i don't like the term but um i, well, I don't like the because you know what revolutions are but you know he is a revolutionary like he this is his life he um you know develops tools for, for people to be free and uh, he goes and fights isis so rojava can have their anarchist community it's like holy he, shit. he's he's a he's an evolutionary evolutionary yeah that's I don't know. Pretty, pretty hardcore. Pretty hardcore. Yeah. But uh, I'll be, I'll be interviewing, uh, you know, one of the, I'll interviewing him. I don't think I said his name yet. But um, I hope no, you, you didn't mention the name. Okay, no. cool. People can Google it. But um, anyways, yeah, that'll be, uh, that'll be coming out here in the next week or so, and that'll be, uh, uh, you know, a live, uh, a, a Facebook uh, live event that I'll also put on PVP because uh, we're gonna talk some, some encryption and cryptocurrencies and, and, and things like that. So, uh, Jason, do you have anything else, man? No. Cool. Nope, that was nope, nope, nope. All right, so uh, that's all we have for you. Make sure to go to libertyunderattack.com forward slash Vanu book and secure your copy of Vanu, a strategy for self liberation today. If you're a Vanu and if you're someone who's interested in, in uh, you know, pursuing uh, personal freedom, then uh, in my humble opinion, uh, you know, it is it is a uh, it is a must read, <laughs> uh, and uh, it's what I've heard from from other folks too. So it's not yes. not just my humble opinion. Um, 
But uh, but yeah, so if you're on Steam It, please follow me over there at Shane Radliff. Find us on Fascist Book and Twitter at Vonnie Podcast and the website VonniePodcast.com. If you want to find uh, you know the free Vonnie publications, if uh, this is your first time hearing about this and uh, you want to uh, learn more and go back to the uh, original source material, uh, just go to Vonnie Pod- uh, yeah, just go to VonniePodcast.com, click on the little free books thing, and uh, you'll see uh, Vonnie Book 1, Vonnie Book 2, and eight or nine different Vonnie publications, and uh, that number will soon, soon be uh, increasing, uh, I hope. So uh, anyways, thanks so much for your support and for tuning in to this special live episode of the podcast. Uh, have a great weekend, guys. Peace. Are we off? <laughs>